Boom, shakalaka boom, you've tuned in to a Monday edition of the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio, here on an Eclipse Monday. I was going to play Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the Heart, but I figured I would just sing it to you anyway. Turn around, bright eyes, and every now and then I fall apart. Anyway, I'll save you all that. Hey, it's an eclipse today. Y'all excited? No? Yeah? Don't care? Is it the end of the world? We had earthquakes in New York City. New York City! That's what they give for trying to make salsa back in the day, or picante sauce. You're old if you get that joke. You, 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 some of y'all might not. Some of y'all might not. Hey, here's the details real quick on the eclipse. As far as the times and all of that good jazz. It's a... Uh, Apparently, it's presented by Paul Moak Subaru. <laughs> Looking at uh, WLBT's Great American Eclipse page here. It's five hours and 24 minutes away for the countdown to the Jackson Partial Eclipse. Here's the, here's the times. The Partial Eclipse will begin right around lunchtime at 12.33 p.m. It'll be at maximum eclipse at 1.52 p.m., then the partial eclipse ends at 3.11 p.m. If you can just remember a terrible band that for some reason has a fan base, 3.11 is when it will be over. You'll be safe to look at the sun again after 3.11. They said uh, some of the things you can have to look at it is solar filters, build your own projector. These are safe ways to view it. Uh, whatever a solar filter is, uh, you can build your own projector. Why would you do that? Uh, eclipse glasses. And, uh, of course, the WLBT live stream. I just had to be 100% honest with y'all. This kind of stuff does nothing for me. I, okay, the moon's over the sun for a couple of minutes. Hey, look, Kid Rock didn't see the sun once for three damn days. I think I've gone longer than that. So... If this is your thing, cool. Um, I do find it interesting in the sense of how our ancestors knew when they were coming and they didn't have the internet. And they built societies around eclipses and human sacrifices. And who we? I mean, you'd hate to be the one that. I don't know how they decided who, who got sacrificed in the eclipse. But they really had to sell that, like. You get to go to the heavens. I've watched way too much History Channel. I've watched way too much Ancient Aliens over the years. I've actually had to quit watching Ancient Aliens. It was driving me nuts. Probably why I was single to my 40s. <laughs> Firm believer in the Ancient Alien Theory. All right, the Guns and Gear text line this morning is 769 one nine four four seven six nine two four one one nine four four. That's the Guns and Gear text line. The Mazda of Jackson phone line is six zero one eight seven nine zero 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 two. Would love to hear from y'all this morning. Would love to hear from y'all this morning. Hey, is there some kind of look? I'm gonna tell y'all what, man. Just, I didn't have this in my nose. It was a little off the beaten path. <clears throat> I don't watch basketball. I hate the sport of basketball. Period. I uh, used to would watch it a little bit back in the day. Like when Mississippi State had a good team, I'd watch. Uh, when Ole Miss had a good team, I'm talking about going back to like the Andrew Cisse era. You know, I, I would I enjoyed some of it then. You know, obviously the Jordan era of NBA, the old Pistons. They were rough, man. Bill Lambeer, that crew. Even watched through some of the, the majority of the Kobe era. And uh, when, when Kobe resi- retired, really his last couple of years, even before his retirement, you know, the league had just changed. And just, you know, it's, 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 frankly, it just feels like it's been hijacked by the LG, LGBTQ BLM movement. It's very sissified. It just doesn't do anything for me. And uh, college basketball is even worse. But I guess the race baiters online, 
I guess there's something. Uh, was there a white girl? I heard what's her name, Caitlin Clark or something, and the girl from LSU. Uh, I actually do know their names because I watched a story about them the other day. Uh, Angela a- Angela Reese or something like Angel Reese or something like that. Black girl versus white girl apparently. Uh, black girl loves to play bad guy, likes to be the villain, the toning, all that. She's the heel in wrestling terms. And, you know, until she lost the other night, and she's like, oh, well, "Why are you look so mean to me?" Anyway. And I guess the South Carolina coach is a stark raving mad lunatic. I, I just don't care. Uh, you know, I, I saw posts as I was logging on. I guess I care enough to talk about it. But I see a post here of, I, I guess it's Dawn Staley, the South Carolina coach. And the guy's post said, white racist and black Republicans, y'all mad? And it shows a picture, I guess, because they won the national championship. No, not mad at all. I speak for the majority of the white delegation when I say we don't care. We do not care. Quit making everything about race. When y'all decide to quit making everything about race, we'll quit talking about race on the show. We will find other topics to discuss. But uh, I, I find it comical that the very people who run around here screaming that everybody's a racist all the time are in fact the actual racist and nobody ever wants to call that out we just kind of stick around put our heads in the sand but we're not allowed to do that breaking rules when necessary you are in fact allowed to do that you're allowed to acknowledge that we're not going to play crazy with y'all just like i'm not going to play the transgender game with you I'm not, I'm not going to play crazy. I'm not going to play make-believe with you. If I want to play make-believe, I'll watch wrestling, which I do. And that's the only make-believe I play. But I know that's fake. They know that's fake. We know it's fake. I can suspend my disbelief for a couple hours a year to watch WrestleMania, like I did last night. Speaking of which, if you were interested in a F around and find out shirt, hat, or flag, I'm having a WrestleMania sale right now in the spirit of Cody winning the championship. Buy one thing, get anything else half price at buyfafo.com. Use the promo code CODY, C-O-D-Y, at checkout, all caps. It was actually a really good event last night. I really did enjoy it. Stayed up late. My girlfriend thinks I'm an absolute nut job. She's like, you watching wrestling? Wrestling. It's WrestleMania. It's not just wrestling. So it's a it's a it's a yearly pilgrimage to the TV. Back to when I was twenty years old. I was trying to explain it last night. I mean, I've been watching wrestling on and off since I was five or six years old. So you know, it's like you just have this lifetime of intertwined stories. And the like, best way I can describe it is like people who've watched Days of Our Lives or Young and the Restless forever. It's this never-ending story, but they close chapters. And it's just this book that's just never-ending. And you have these families that have been involved in it forever. And a young, new, younger family member comes up. You know, Cody Rhodes is Dusty Rhodes' son, and uh, so on and so forth. And you're f- intertwined with this thing forever. So it's, it's interesting to watch from that perspective. And, like, you know it's fake, but how do they get to the ending? That's always the, you know, you try to outbook them. Am I smarter than them? How are they going to do it? Yeah, anyway. Let's see here, man. Um, I got a bunch of stuff we're going to talk about this morning. It's not going to be a very politics-heavy show today. I wasn't just, I was not married to the internet all weekend. I jumped online last night. But today's going to be more of a freestyle kind of day. I got a lot of things I want to hit. I got hung up, and I did get hung up in a conversation online uh, over the weekend a little bit about a, and we're going to wait to the second hour to get to it because I want to have this conversation without y'all's kids in the car this morning. But I will tell you the topic. It says a a woman pretended to be 14-year-old, to be a 14-year-old, a 23-year-old woman pretended to be a 14-year-old woman online so she could hook hook up with underage boys. And boy, did I step into a hornet's nest on Twitter with this one, but stay tuned. We'll talk about that one 
in hour two. Also, the Satanic Temple stuff. Friday and Morton, I guess it was. The the Satanic Temple folks decided to do a protest out there. Slightly mind-bending, to be honest with you. They are doing a protest to protect children from corporal punishment. Which I 100% co-sign corporal punishment. I beat, beat them kids when they act up. It's the problem around here. None of y'all ain't beating your children. Publicly or privately. Put that hand to that backside, son. Put that belt to that backside. They're the teachers, principals. That's the problem now. Anytime one of y'all's little babies get their feeling hurt at school, y'all running up there trying to fight the teacher. Fighting that little badass kid of yours. Anyway. I thought it was a scam. I'm just going to be honest with you. I told Lindsay Beckham, she was trying to tell me about it. I said, Lindsay, this is a hoax. Me and Sean both told her the same thing. This is a hoax. Satanic Church ain't coming to Morton, Mississippi. Well, I was wrong. They did. But I still, people were messaging me like, you're not going to talk about this? You're not going to make a video about this? No, I'm not. It was like five people. They look like a bunch of 40-year-old virgins. I'm pretty sure some of them still were still wearing face masks. It looked like L- Lanessa. I can't remember her last name. She's the Antifa girl around here. It looked like her crew. Same people that were doing the Antifa rally out at Freedom Park in Madison back in 2020. Just, just a... a a bunch of ugly, unattractive trolls. I don't mean internet trolls. I mean like literally trolls, like the kind that hang out under the bridge. It just, I don't want to bring it. I know we're, this is probably my biggest platform every morning uh, between the internet and radio. I think radio is the biggest platform. So I am, I guess I am talking about it, which is bringing attention to it. But sometimes I think they want you to share their image and help their online engagement out. I will say one thing funny. I did I did catch a comment where <laughs> one of y'all who have done cheated on your wives or, or husbands and have a shared Facebook account now said something on one of the comments and one of the satanic church people snapped back or clapped back as the kids say and said, I'm sorry your husband cheated on you. They were a little bit more vulgar about the way they said it. I couldn't help but laugh because you know that's why they have a joint Facebook account now. I mean, especially if you're under 70. I get when some older folks have it. But, you know, if you're under 50 years old and you got a joint Facebook account, one of y'all cheated. And I know, I'm going to start getting some texts and saying, nah, nah, not me. Well, then there's some trust issues there. I mean, there's a reason why you have a joint Facebook So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Let's take a break. This is the Clay Edwards Show. When we come back, I got a billion-dollar idea, and I don't know why these things ain't around here no more. We're going to talk about it. Business owners, investors, get ready. Get your pencil sharpened up. I'm about to give you a billion-dollar idea. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Breaking rules when necessary. It's a Fafo Monday. We ain't got to just be a Friday run here. We ain't got to just make things that got F's in them. Be Fafo. It'll be a Monday too. I was driving in today. Little little sprinkles outside. Going to be a meh, meh weather today for the eclipse. Uh, shout out to our weather guy. I'm not a weather guy. Our news guy, Chris. Man, he's been doing such a great job. Really enjoy hearing his stories here uh, between the breaks and top of the hour and stuff. It's great to have a we great to have a a, a good news guy. It's, it's the little things in life. Sometimes I could do without the CBS 
uh, Democrat liberal uh, news at the top of the hour, but it does give us content to moan and complain about. Uh, this segment is going to be brought to you by, I just saw a uh, post on Facebook from my buddy there, so we'll, we'll talk about him real quick. Lakeland Glass and Tent. Guys, get over there today. Check them out online, lakelandglassandtent.com for a quote. But you can buy their Lakeland Drive store. That's the OG location. And you're going to get your windshield repair and replacement done there. They do all automotive glass, too, not just windshields. You get a uh, It's lawnmower season. You get a side window knocked out by rock or whatever the case may be criminals in Jackson, whatever, you know, anyway, whatever may cause you to need a glass, they got you covered at Lakeland Glass and Tent. And of course, get your windows tinted with Expel Ceramic Window Tint and help keep the heat down. You know, I do I really have to explain to you why it's good to keep your car cool on the inside? I mean, look at you getting these, some of these trucks and cars, and they got the old busted up dashboards and from the heat. From it being 190 degrees in the summertime, being able to fry an egg off the dashboard or burn the back of your legs. Anyway, get that ceramic tent, help keep that temperature down. They also can put it on your homes and businesses to help keep your utilities down. And last but not least, ceramic coating, wraps, paint protection film. They got you covered for all of your paint protection needs at Lakeland Glass and Tent, where quality Matters, Expel, Dealer of the Year, two years in a row. Again, start online with a quote today at LakelandGlassIntent.com. All right, so Jason's a businessman. I bet you I could put, uh, make this make sense for him. I was sitting around over the weekend. If you follow me on social media, you've probably already seen my video I made about this, but I've had time to really uh, vet this thought through, and I, I think that Somebody needs to open up and bring back beer barns. And it ain't got to just be beer. I'm just calling it beer barn for the sake of uh, nostalgia. But we need a, we need drive through convenience stores. You got like two lanes. One's for beer and tobacco. You know, each one's like for beer, tobacco, stuff of that nature. Cokes, whatever. We'll call it, we'll call that packaged goods, dry goods. One lane. Is for gas station Chester Fried Chicken or Crispy Crunchy, whatever your preference is. I like Chester Fried. And gas station barbecue, like Rib Daddy's. That Exxon there at Northside Drive. It's really good OG Mississippi barbecue and Mississippi Fried Chicken gas, gas station fried chicken. One lane is for that. Then you could have a lane for... A coffee place, like one of these uh, Seattle drips or my personal favorite, Mocha Mugs. You can have a lane for that. And man, oh yeah. And you got to bring back full service pumps, gas pumps. Have some guys out there pumping gas, girls, whatever. You know, I don't know how we got away from, from these things, to be honest with you. We live in a society now where... We will sit our fat butts in a car wrapped around Chick-fil-A four times for 45 minutes instead of simply park in an empty parking place, get out, walk in, get our food at the counter, and walk back out all in less than five minutes. We would rather sit in the car for however long. And I'm just using Chick-fil-A as my example here because it's always got the longest line. Super duper lazy society. We'll overpay to have food delivered and everything else. You don't think that on a rainy day, especially, that people would like to just drive through the beer barn to get their convenience store needs, their cigarettes, their beer, their Cokes, five-hour energies, fried chicken. Have you, have you ridden by Popeye's or KFC lately? Have you, been down, have you been to Flowood lately? All the fried chicken joints down there? If if you wanted to test this business model, I'm sure there's plenty of quick lube places that have gone out of business. Get in there. Give it a whirl. Maybe start on a smaller scale. Just do the beer, cigarettes, tobacco. With cigarettes and tobacco, the same thing. Beer, tobacco. You know, your big selling items. I think it would work. Uh, I was talking with a buddy of mine about it who actually owns a gas station. He got into the, the weeds a little bit on... 
Well, beer beer cost is this now. We, there's going to be a convenience fee now. There, there's there's going to be a convenience fee. I mean, I think I don't I don't think people stop at gas stations. And this is just me. I've been drinking beer for a long time. I don't automatically say I'm going to that gas station. It's fifteen cents cheaper a case. I just don't. I, I barely do that with gas. I will drive down to Rich Land. Because uh, all those gas stations down 49 there do have the cheapest gas. And if I'm in the area, I will ride down there and get gas at either the uh, racetrack or the Walmart. But generally speaking, like, I'm just not a penny pincher when it comes to my beer and stuff like that. Like, I don't, I don't say, oh, this store, this store's got the cheapest. I usually go where, wherever they speak fluent English and they're polite and, and it's clean. Anyway, that's my billion-dollar idea for somebody out there. Bring back beer barns, man. We used to have one on Lakeland Drive, sold crawfish during crawfish season. Man, it was nice. And people in my comments kept saying, oh, well, you know, they changed the law, uh, and they made them get more insurance, and this, that, that, that ain't what happened. People just got away from them. They may have used to serve draft beer. We used to serve draft beer at my dad's convenience store, about a half gallons and gallons, and even about a cup's pre-open container laws. And it'd be, the open container laws kind of kind of killed that, and I mean, there maybe was some liability selling draft beer. I don't know, but I'm not talking about selling draft beer or open containers here. I'm talking about selling suitcases of beer, six packs, stuff like that. Probably wouldn't want to sell any singles either. I mean, if you're just looking from a liability standpoint, I don't understand the difference of selling a single or selling a six pack. All I do is take one of the beers off the six pack ringer. I think you're actually promoting more drinking and driving, more dangerous drinking and driving, by forcing people to buy six beers instead of just one. But what do I know? What do I know? I've only been in the bar or beer business for half my life. Guns of Gear text line 769-241-1944. 769-241-1944. Mazda of Jackson phone line. 601-879-0002. Should we bring back beer barns? Let me know. What do y'all guys think? Hey, I just saw breaking news. Country music megastar Morgan Wallen has been arrested on three felony counts. Basically, what Morgan Wallen did is he probably went to a beer barn and wanted one beer, but he was forced to buy six, like in Rankin County. So he drank all six. He went to the grand opening. I guess last night was the CMT Awards or something. CMA Awards. I don't know. Whatever. I don't watch that stuff either. But he went to Eric Church's new bar in Nashville, got drunk, and apparently threw a chair off the building. Now him and Michael Guest's son both have something in common. They have both been arrested in Nashville for throwing stuff off the rooftop of bars. Not in bad company. Not in bad company at all. Uh... Hey, look, man, that's rock star stuff. I hope nobody got hurt. They charged him with three felonies for throwing a chair off a roof. I mean, I guess if it had hit somebody, it could have been. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that's a bit overcharging. Come on, man. Let Morgan live. Y'all been giving that guy hell for a long time, man. Just let that boy live his life. He seems like a good guy. I had a good night. I had a good time that night in Oxford, the show that I that actually went on. I think he's got a show coming up in uh, Oxford again for, to make up for that cancel one. What is it on the twentieth or twenty first or something? Let's see here. Guns of Gear text line. Like, y'all find it now. The texts are coming in. It's always. I can always count on nostalgia. Uh, and, and and current pops <laughs> pop culture stuff to get the text machine rolling. Uh, unknown texter says, hey, also, bring back Mr. Gaddy's and Pasquale's. You rock, bro. Thank you. Kenneth says, uh, well, this is kind of unrelated to anything we're talking about so far this morning, but we'll hit it. Kenneth says, Rankin County NAACP calls for sheriff's resignation. I wanna, we'll, we'll circle back to that. Let me let me finish these texts. Up. Paul Stewart on the Guns of Gear text line says, do you happen to know why the two Circle Ks on the corner of 49 and Florence Byron Road we're able to sell single beers, but nowhere else in Rankin County can. Um, two Circle K's on the corner of Florence 
but I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not even visioning which two Circle Ks those are. Maybe they changed the law there. Maybe that, that municipality changed the rule. You know, I don't know. Unknown texture. I'm sure he will take some time off and cancel the Oxford concert again. Nah. I think he's going to rock and roll. Unknown texture. Dude, if I ever get rich or hit the lottery, I'm going to open a beer barn just for you and everybody in the Metroplex. I mean, just think about how many lives you could save in Jackson alone with a with a self-serve, a full-serve gas pump where nobody had to get out of their cars. That way you just put the guy pumping the gas in a bulletproof vest and helmet. I'm just thinking about it. I mean, it's saving lives. Opening up a drive through convenience store. <laughs> Let's see here. Bobcat on the Guns and Gear text line says, Must have been a long time since you have bought gas in Richland. Ain't no cheap gas here. Ain't no cheap gas. Nowhere. Cheap is a relative term. Cheaper in Richland. Jess says, I have been preaching this for years. Not a beer barn necessarily, but man, I'd love to drive through and get a coat without having to drag all my kids out of the van. I'm telling you, man, it's a million dollar idea. I, I, I know for a fact we got some of these enterprising um, Indians and Palestinian guys and stuff that um, Middle Eastern dudes that listen to this show. I, I meet them when I go in gas stations. Uh, shout out to my guy at the one in Pearl there over by the police station. Good, good folks, man. Shout out to my folks at the one on uh, 471 in Baker Lane. All good people. They, uh, Y'all guys need to think about this. You're going to need a little bit more land because you're going to have to, you know, them lines are going to be long, especially for the fried chicken around here. I'm going to be in that one every day. <laughs> Maybe this is a bad idea. My diet, I don't know if I can handle this. drive through gas station chicken. You might start real talk. If you start putting some drive through Chester fried chickens up, because it's the best chicken in the world, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to put KFC and Popeyes and churches in a hurting. And we're going to read these, clear these texts out and um, take a break real quick. One more text here. Unknown texture. How about a watermark? There are three. How about a water park? There was three when I was a kid. Now you have to drive an hour plus. I'm afraid I'm going to got some bad news for you <laughs> with the water park. They ain't going to work around here no more. Let's take a break. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show, live here on WYAB 103.9 FM, streaming worldwide at WYAB.com, as well as the TuneIn app and Alexa, and uh, the FM radio app, wherever you may have that. This segment brought to you by our friends over at Boykin Contractors, right there in Florence, Mississippi. Bryce Boykin and his team out there doing big things, man. Hey, you need to get a remodel, a new roof, an addition. Repairs, all that done to your house, man, they can take care of everything. If you had a deck, you can watch the eclipse on it today. Get you a deck built. That way you're good and ready by the time the next eclipse comes around. Look, man, Boykin Contractors, they are licensed, bonded, insured. They're a Christ-centered business. I know I get a little long-winded with these ad reads sometimes, man, but it does mean a lot to me that these people trust us to help promote their business. And one of the biggest things I see, one of the biggest complaints I see on Facebook market, uh, not marketplace, but these real talk groups, uh, Brandon Uncensored, you know what I mean? These community groups on Facebook, people are always looking for a good, dependable contractor that they can trust in their home, that they can give the supply the material money to and know they're going to come back you know and that's going to be boykin contractors and there's other good ones out there too but we're going to talk about boykin that, that that's why it matters to go with somebody that's licensed bonded and insured not the guy you met out in front of the, hard, the hardware store not the guy that your buddy knows get you a guy that you can trust in your home 
They're Christ-centered. If they can afford to advertise, they're usually a pretty good company. You know, it's just look for little things like that. But really, you ain't got to look no further because I got you a guy right here, Bryce Boykin, Boykin Contractors, Florence, Mississippi. Here's his phone number, 601-951-7336, 601-951-7336. Or just search Google, Facebook, et cetera, for Boykin Contractors. That's B-O-Y-K-I-N. All right, back to the chaos here. Oh, the beer barn stuff, man. Somebody's going to get rich on my idea there. That's what I was reading a few more of your text messages. Uh, Shane texts in on the Gunsinger text line. It says, um, Florence, in fact, does have an ordinance where they can sell single beer. So, and uh, shout out to Shane, man. He put a Fafo mm-hmm. sticker on the back of his, uh, his mud drag truck. Uh, we appreciate that. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, the Guns of Gear text line is 769-241-1944. If y'all want to chime in, 769-241-1944. All right, we are actually all caught up on text messages. So let's move to another topic, shall we? Uh, rest in peace to C.J. Snare, singer extraordinaire of the world-famous uh 80s hair band. They actually had their biggest hit in the 90s, uh, but we'll say 80s hair band. Firehouse, 64 years old. He passed away over the weekend very suddenly. I mean, the guy looked very young. He held it together really well. Uh, we actually saw them back in I get, June or July this past year. They opened up for Brett Michaels at the Choctaw Indian Fair. Firehouse was one of my favorite bands growing up and uh, still just looked really young, put on a great show. He was a fun follow on social media, really lived his life to the fullest. I was totally shocked to hear about that. I really sat around Saturday, and I kind of got in my feelings a little bit, man. Uh, I was watching the Bray Wyatt documentary on Peacock. And whether you're a wrestling fan or not, you, you, need, you need to watch this, especially young fathers out there. Um, really sad. Really sad. A uh, man was in his, I think he was 36 years old. Uh, he was top of his game as a professional wrestler. Had a very interesting story. Very uh, this guy he couldn't help but pull for. Died of a heart problem. Peak athlete, mind you. Now they said it was complications from a bout of COVID, where he had some heart issues. Now I, look, I'm just speculating here and saying I'm gonna speculate about uh, CJ Snare. There, these are people who lived in public, who lived and had to work in public venues in places that they had vax requirements and vaccine mandates, whatever you want to call it. I firmly believe that they probably had to get vaccinated. And uh, it took down two people. So just, I was watching that documentary and it was interviewing his his wife, his ex-wife, his kids, all of his friends, brother, co-workers and it was a really sad documentary, you know. You can't, you know, every time you watch stuff like that, you know, you start thinking about your own mortality a little bit. And then, as I'm watching that, I get the notification that the fellow in Firehouse had died. And like these are just people I've been watching for years. You know, you kind of feel like you know these celebrities a little bit. It just uh, and then we're at the we went to that country, we went to that concert Saturday night. Riley Green and Tracy Lawrence at the Brandon Amphitheater. I'd never seen. Either one of them, for that matter. But I've been a Tracy Lawrence fan for decades. I think first time I got my heart broke, it was to the soundtrack of Tracy Lawrence's uh, I See It Now and that whole album, you know? Anyway, and we got to see Riley Green. I didn't know what to think. I was like, man, is this one of these modern bro country guys? And there's going to be a lot of smoke and lights and this and that. I'm going to be honest. And the music was a little more modern sounding, but the guy put off big George Strait energy. I mean, he didn't, he went running around doing flips and wasn't drunk and just put on a good show. Stood there, just had real charisma and swagger about him. Really reminded me of George Strait a lot. Not the music necessarily, but just the stage presence. I could definitely see, man, the women around me were losing their minds over this guy. So my my daughter included. (laughs) 
Anyway, good show if you get a chance to see Riley Green. But he played a song. I say all that to say this, to tie this back into the mortality thing. He played a song called, I Wish Grandpa Hadn't Have Died. And I've already, you know, just uh, been watching and hearing about death all day. And he shows these videos and it's got the clips, of, it's got pictures of him and his grandpa and stuff up there. And his grandfather has clearly passed away. And it got me to thinking, and I'm fighting it back at this point too, right? It's like, it's like, don't cry in public, don't cry in public. And I said the thing about the fact that I never really got to know any of my grandfathers. I was blessed to have three. And one, three, four, four, no, three, mom, dad, a stepdad. Yeah. So I never met my, I never met my stepdads. He died when my dad said I was 15. I never met my, my dad's father. He died right after I was born, right before, right after. I can't even remember. I want to say right after. I'm named after him. And then my mother's father, he, it's, I did get to know him, but he ended up with, with uh, dementia, Alzheimer's. As I got into my teens and stuff, I mean, I had my memories of him when I was a kid. I remember sitting up watching wrestling with him and all that stuff as a kid. And I think that's why I still watch wrestling days because he's got to be watching wrestling. I remember, I'll never forget when and you, you old school NWA guys will appreciate this. I'll never forget when the four horsemen broke Dusty Rhodes' arm at a gas station, slamming his arm in his truck door. They caught him at a gas station. Well, my, we called him Big Daddy, man. Big Daddy believed that was real. Big, my Big Daddy died. Uh, Still thinking wrestling was real, and Rick Rick Flair was a dirty sob. <laughs> so, but I was just thinking about all that, man. All those memories come rushing back. You know, really wishing, man. I wish Grandpa hadn't died. You know, it's just a, a, that was my Saturday, and then wake up Sunday. I mean, we had a great night, by the way. It was just uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's good to question your mortality and start thinking about those things and. Start thinking about, hey, your mom, if I die today, do I leave the kind of legacy that these people have with their family? You know, do people when people miss you when you're gone? You know, did did, did you did you leave the world a better place? And sometimes I, I question if I have. I've been so focused on my career and stuff the last three or four years and kind of reinventing who I am that I don't know that I've been the best person to my family. I know I haven't been. Uh, the best person with my church and in my, my spiritual life, you know, as I chase this career and all this stuff. So I don't know. It was a, did a lot of reflecting over the last couple of days. And uh, I don't really have anything to say to that. There's nothing you can change. You can't snap your fingers and, and change anything. But if you're out there, you know, just think about those things. Uh, today could be your last day here, man. Make sure your family knows you love them. And I uh, try to live a life where they miss you when you're gone. Let's come back, land the plane for the hour. We got some saucy stuff to talk about an hour too. Welcome back into the show as we get ready to take our top of the hour break here in about 40 seconds. Things we're going to hit when we come back include, but not limited to, a 22-year-old was pretending to be a 14-year-old line to sleep with underage boys. Were the boys victims? Or are they just living their best life? We're going to debate that on the other side. Surprisingly, it is a major debate online if they are victims or lucky. Also, Britney Spears is leaving $100 million a year on the table by giving her content away free on Instagram instead of joining only fans. We're going to break it all down. We'll be right back. Boom goes the Dynamite. It's hour two of the Clay Edwards Show. This hour brought to you by our friends over at Reliable Rental Equipment. Get over there today, Reliable Equip- ReliableRentalEquipment.com or check them out in person. Right there on Meadowbrook Road at the corner of North State, out there in Fondren, Jackson, Mississippi. The Fondren part of Jackson, Mississippi. Go see Reddy, Teddy McRaney and the team, Mr. Steven, the boss man. For all of your heavy equipment rental needs. But man, they got so much more than just your big heavy equipment. They got all your smaller stuff too. Need a winter weed eater? Rent a weed eater? They got you. A zero-turn mower? 
They got you. Chainsaws. Check. Outdoor lighting. Check. Generators. Check. I can go on and on and on. When you rent a piece of heavy um, earth-moving equipment right now, you're going to get a dumpster, a rollback dumpster, for free. That's what he said. That's what he said last week. Rollback dumpster, run off for free with a piece of heavy equipment. So they got all kind of specials going all the time. They got specials on rollback dumpsters all the time. I think it's free delivery within a 10-mile radius. Just uh, check with them, see what they got, see what you need. And I bet you they got a special going on it. Holler at Ready, Teddy McRaney today. Again, ReliableRentalEquipment.com. All right, man, so controversial topic here. I, I, I can't believe it's a controversial topic. I didn't think it was controversial. Uh, and uh, uh, according to some people on my on my Twitter timeline, I'm the pedo in this conversation. I'm like, well, that's a that's role reversal for me. Because I definitely have never considered myself to be on that side of anything. I'm just speaking from a former 14 year old boy's perspective here. I'm not saying it's right either, by the way. You maybe ask yourself, Clay, what are you talking about? Let's rewind, shall we? Let me see here. I've got the story saved in a couple different places. Here we go. So, as quick as it'll pull up anyway. A teacher, not a teacher, a woman pretends to be a 14-year-old online to sleep with underage boys. The 23-year-old woman allegedly slept with her first victim about 30 times. Now, again, this is kind of like the hot teacher thing. Oh, she's 23, not 53. So let me just say that. Uh, Alyssa Ann Zinger of Tampa, Florida, Florida woman, posed as a student to sexually abuse middle school students. Despite her previous arrests, she continued to seduce them. The, 20, the, the 23-year-old allegedly slept with her first victim about 30 times and said that she had molested other boys in the past. According to authorities, she allegedly sent pornographic video to several children via Snapchat in the winter. She was charged with two counts of lewd conduct and harassment and five counts of molesting a child between the ages of 12 and 15. The 23-year-old posed as a student. So this article I'm reading kind of busted up a little bit. Anyway, it says, In early April, more teenage boys responded to Zinger, claiming that she had created a false persona of a 14-year-old girl studying at home. I mean, isn't that the plot to every porn? <laughs> anyway, it's disturbing to see adults take advantage of and prey on a child, says Lee Burkhall of Tampa Police Department. We encourage anyone who may have been a victim of Zinger to, conf- to come forward. The police will support you and ensure that this woman will no longer harm you or others, he promised. He promises, y'all. Hillsborough County School Network also managed to distance itself from the 23-year-old. It didn't happen at our school. However, we are glad that the molested students felt safe enough to report it to an adult on campus. She uh, said spokesman, spokesperson Anya Arga. Our staff immediately contacted law enforcement so they could begin the investigation, she added. So I just I saw this story on Twitter, and so I just commented. You know what I mean? I'm, I can only be honest. I said, look, I'm just going to tell you, none of those 14-year-old boys, not a single one of those 14-year-old boys considers themselves, air quotes in the studio, a victim. Now, I'm not saying, I am not saying what she did was right. I'm not siding with the pedo. I'm just saying, as a 14-year-old boy, I would not have said no. I would not feel like a victim. I'm just going to say this right here. Men can't be raped by women. Period. It just don't work like that. If it gets, y'all know what I'm trying to say here. If you get aroused and that thing gets to working, you want to do whatever comes next. Period. Period. 
silence on the set. Men can't be raped by women. I don't care how old they are. Now, I'm not saying this is right. It's against the law. Go to jail. I'm just saying. Those little boys. That they didn't. I'm going to tell you how this whole thing unfolded. They did not report themselves as having, having been abused. They bragged to a buddy and word got back to their parents. Then they got, then it got reported. They did not feel violated <laughs> and go and tell their parents. They felt accomplished and they had to run, tell somebody that that's how that went. I would love y'all's opinions on this. 601-879-0002 is the Mazda of Jackson phone line. The Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. News flash here, young guys like older women. Younger, younger women like older men. Now, I, I, I mean legally. I want, I, want, I want to separate some stuff here. I want to unpack this a little bit, you know. As a 14-year-old kid, I had crushes on 20-year-old women. Now I don't even consider 20-year-olds grown-ups. You know, we have a 22-year-old daughter, 23, 24-year-old daughter. Just, I, that's now kids to me. Like, I could never, ever be with anybody that was close to my kid's age. That's gross to me. But when I was 14, it's so like 10 years older, I felt like a big shot dog. But, that's, but people are all up in the comments saying this is this is how, this is going to lead to these boys becoming pedophiles, rapists, have a porn addiction, everything. And what's weird is looking at these people's profiles, it's liberals that are the most upset about this. So it, it, like y'all 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 think that pedophilia is a Sexual preference. Y'all, y'all name them minor attracted people. Y'all have given it a whole new name. Don't even think it should be criminal. I'm, I'm guessing the only reason that they're upset with this is because this attractive, blonde, young girl in her 20s is having straight sex with boys instead of it being like the preacher or a choir t- teacher or some sick pedophile molesting boys, that would be okay. I, 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 I'm trying to understand the, the, the fight here. Again, arrest her. I'm just saying the boys ain't, don't feel like victims. Uh, my buddy Josh says, my wife is 13 years older than me. I was 26 when we got married. Been happily married 23 years. Yep. Let's see here. I saw somebody else. On the guns and gear text line, you're absolutely correct on this subject because uh, I can't, because a, uh, we'll call it an, an excited limb don't have no sense. Yes. Unknown texture. Those boys learned a very valuable lesson. Keep your mouth shut. Crazy T says, Preach. So, again, I'm not supporting pedophilia. Obviously, the girl don't need to be lying. You know, they tell them she's 14, whatever. I mean, you think they wouldn't have done it if they had known she was 23? They'd have been even more excited about doing it. Let's be honest here. Are we worried these guys are going to grow up to be good, straight men? Is that the real concern here? I think that's the real concern for some of these nut jobs on Twitter. Oh my God, they're going to find out at a young age that they actually want to be men. And they're going to like women. We can't have that. Lock her up. Though anybody off the internet that remotely agrees, call them pedos. So, write a passage. Weirdos, man. I'm just sitting here looking at some of these comments. 
I mean, this thing, my, my, my reply has got 1.4 million views and it's been liked 8.7 thousand times. So this thing went viral under Colin Ruggs post about this girl. So it's just a whole host of insanity under it. Amiri King actually agrees with me. I don't know if y'all know who Amiri is. He's hilarious. But it's it's the people who don't agree all have cats as their profile picture and have names, their ats on Twitter here, have a bunch of numbers in it, which just tells they're like bots, you know? But this guy says, or girl, I don't even know what it is, says once their porn addiction and pedophile, pedophile urges kick in, from being sexualized at such a young age. Sure, definitely not victims. Do y'all not think young boys at 14 are not having, do y'all think young boys aren't having sex? Or girls for that matter? At 14? Hell, I'm not saying it's right. Again, I mean, I think my grandmother got pregnant with my mom at 15 years old. 16 years old, something like that, and was married to my grandfather to the day he died. People used to, People used to get pregnant young and stay married to that person forever. Now they just get knocked up and don't know who who the baby daddy is half the time, but people always been getting pregnant young. That ain't, that ain't changed. It definitely happens a lot around here. Let's read some more of your text messages here on the guns of your text line. Clay, you're 100% correct. I'm not sure what planet most of your commenters live on in our own, but a 14-year-old with a 20-year-old is a dream of every (laughs) 14-year-old. I'd be so mad at my parents if I was one of these 14-year-olds and they went and pressed charges on this teacher. Now, yes, when it's a girl, it is different. Like if if the if the if this if the roles were reversed here, and it was a twenty three year old dude pretending to be a fourteen year old dude to sleep with young girls, yes, the girls are the victims. Girls can in fact be raped. Boys can't. I, I don't care how much that offends y'all. You don't get to, as the Democrats say. You don't get to discount my lived experience. <laughs> I'm just telling you. That thing down there makes some terrible decisions. But that don't mean it didn't make those decisions. Let's take a break. Come back. Hit the reset button. This is the Clay Edwards Show. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. This segment brought to you by our friends over at Southeastern Power Sports, guys, get over there today for all of your <clears throat> ATV repair and replacement needs, parts and accessories. They got it all. I mean, your ATV, your side-by-side, if you torn something up this weekend, get over there and see them. Heck, if you want to go tear something up this weekend, get over there, see them. They got all the parts you're going to need. Uh, they don't do engine repair, but they can uh, send it off or recommend you to somewhere who can. So if you've got like internal engine issues, uh, give them a shout and uh, let them refer you to somebody. But with anything else, you need a good tune-up or <clears throat> anything else fixed, they got you taken care of right over there in Madison, Mississippi, Highway 51, veteran-owned, uh, retired officer-owned Southeastern Power Sports. New oil change, wheels, tires, stereos, lift kits. They got it all right there. Southeastern Power Sports. All right, man, I want to hear from you guys. Mazda Jackson phone line, 601-879-0002. You're blowing me up on the Guns and Gear text line. I would like to talk to some people this morning. Um, Jason texts in and says, you can't tell me those kids' dads weren't high-fiving them when the mom wasn't looking. Now, the, the nightmare scenario is if one of them knocks her up. You know, the, then you got a, then you got a problem. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing she was well stocked on Plan B's. Just, she got got one of them thirty times. 
I mean, she tricked that little boy 30 times. <laughs> oh, man, the world we live in. I'm, again, you'll never convince me that if this was a gay thing, that these very people who are upset wouldn't be praising it. Let them kids live. Let them be their true selves. If those same 14-year-old boys wanted to cut their peepees off and be a girl, they would be all about it. But because some hot blonde has a fetish for young guys, again, I'm not saying that that's right. She's in the wrong. I'm just saying it's a victimless crime. I don't think it affects anybody. N- news flash here. Uh, if you got kids in the car, you may want to cover their ears or change the channel here in about five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. News flash here. Teenage boys don't care. They, 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 do, they do not care. They, they, once, that, once puberty starts, the fact that we're, we're actually animals at the end of the day, all of us, we're animals. Once puberty starts and our animalistic stuff kicks in, we don't care. We ain't, n- n- nobody's checking an ID at that age. <clears throat> I remember first crush I ever had on somebody. I still to this day remember what this girl looks like. I was, I was probably 12, 13 years old. My dad used to go to the recovery room, the bar, when it was still in Fondren. He's good for his good friend Mac owns that place, and we'd have to go by there sometimes during the day. And there was a bartender there, and I had I, I had like a legit crush on this chick. I don't know how old she was, twenty five, thirty. I don't know. She she looked good to me. And I'm I'm just gonna tell y'all if for it, it, if for one second she wanted to make all my dreams come true at that age I'd have been I'm about this life things getting good early around here of course you grow up and you realize that ain't that ain't that ain't life but I'm just saying man as young boys you know especially as, as puberty kicks in we uh. We, we, believe it or not, we like attractive women. I mean, if, if you don't, maybe you're gay, and that's okay, too. I just know I wasn't. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, Guns of Gear text line says, This teacher, I guess her biggest crime is turning these boys into future pimps. And by pimps, I mean players. And this girl wasn't even a teacher. This is just a girl. But there's actually no teacher aspect to this. I guess I, I was just comparing it to like when these uh, attractive teachers, these young attractive teachers, um, have relationships with these uh, boys that are seniors and stuff. I think we really blow this thing out of proportion. If a 21 year old teacher, uh, you know, they they have don't teachers are young now. I mean, 21 year old assistant teacher or whatever is having a, a, a situationship. With a 17, 18 year old kid, I, I, I don't know. I have a hard time getting my feathers ruffled over that. I, I do think that it, it, it is an issue when men take advantage of younger girls. I don't. I, as a young boy, as a once young boy, I feel like I have the lived experience to speak on this, and nobody can tell me that I'm wrong. But as a young boy, I think it's a different deal. I think it's more of a rite of passage kind of thing. I never, I never partook in anything like that, you know. But I knew guys that did, and they grew up to be just fine. None of them had any trauma from it. They don't feel like they were trafficked, taken advantage of. They're not victims. They were heroes to their fellow students. Anyway. It's my odd hill to die on today. Somebody called me a pedo. I was like, well, we're going to talk about this. Um, let's see here. 
unknown texter, same person that just texted, says, I didn't realize it wasn't a teacher. I lost my virginity at 16 to a 26-year-old hottie. It was wonderful. Exactly. Exactly. Again, I'm a, this is going to be the last thing I say about it. I'm going to repeat this. They're mad because this girl is teaching young boys that it's okay to be straight. If these same young boys said they were transgender and they wanted to have sexual reassignment surgery, they would be applauding them. It's okay to know you want to cut it off. It's not okay to want to use it. What a weird, weird world we live in. I hope this eclipse is just the end of it all. What do they keep calling it? The path of totality? That is a very weird thing to call the shade. Hey, if you're hungry today, man, how about dinner tonight? Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's opens at 4 p.m. They're open till midnight. Mr. Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's himself, Chip Matthews, is now hosting a show here every Monday for the time being. From 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., he'll be coming up here next. His guest today is Lindsey Beckham. But uh, listen to that and then get out to Acme tonight. Enjoy some great homemade, from scratch pizza with fresh toppings. I can't express the importance of the fresh toppings. If you're new here, try the pig, pig, pig or the Canadian bacon or something with ham or bacon on it. They, they cook it on their raw instead of like pre-cooked and frozen. So as it cooks, that fat from it gets down in the cheese and in the crust in the pizza. And it's absolutely phenomenal and it's not overcooked and burnt. It's a game changer. Game changer. They're available for sit down, carry out, or delivery. Available on all major food delivery apps. They got 12 different specialty pizzas or you can build your own. Or try their Will of Flavor. Take three different specialty pizzas and put it on one pie and see what you like and what you don't. You're probably going to like it all, but maybe you end up with a new favorite pizza. They also have pasta, burgers, and more, as well as nine different frozen daiquiris on tap. And they are available to go. So, hey, now, let's try, let's take that to our beer barn idea. and Let's add another lane to the beer barn idea. We put an Acme pizza and daiquiris on one end. Now, y'all love gas station pizza? How about real pizza? And drive through daiquiris. That's another billion dollars. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Guys, get out to Burgers, Blues, Barbecue, all three locations today. How about this morning? Get over there to Madison and Flowood for breakfast. The Flowood location is located right there in front of Dick's Sporting Goods and Dogwood Shopping Center. Try the chicken and waffles, the pancakes, or the southern style cat head chicken biscuits. Man, can't go wrong there. They do fried chicken very, very well at Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue. <clears throat> Get over to all three locations as well, including downtown Brandon, as well as their aforementioned Madison and Dogwood for lunch or dinner. Six days a week. They got a blue plate special every day. Uh, hamburger steaks available every day with a rotating a uh, fried option of some sort or meatloaf or something like that every day. They always got something different going on, different veggies. And, of course, they got the award-winning hamburgers, fries, wraps, salads, B3 bowls. They have multiple food trucks. They have two food trucks available for all of your special event needs. Hey, get, need a catering? They got you covered there, too. They can do from five to 5,000 people. So holler at Burgers blues.com for more information and again get out there today enjoy a nice hey you know what they all got a patio here's a food for thought all three locations have patios get out on the patio well the one in brandon's covered but neither here nor there don't let the don't let the truth get in the way of a good story get out there and enjoy the the eclipse today at lunchtime at burgers blues Barbecue, or hey, not going to be in those areas? How about downtown Jackson? Martin's downtown, best blue plate in the city. 
They got a big patio also. Go watch it downtown there while you're enjoying the country fried steak or whatever else is on the menu that you may enjoy. Hey, Martin's just opened up their gas station. That's, that's right. Martin's Market is now open at Livingston. The former gas station there at Livingston is now Martin's Market uh, with the restaurant opening soon. Get out there. See them today at the corner of Highway 22 and 463 in Madison County. All right. I could sit here and argue on Twitter with people the entire time the rest of the show this morning. One guy says, in words like you are the reason why male sexual assault doesn't get taken seriously. I hope you never have kids. I got some bad news for him. Got kids. They turned out fine. But this guy has a uh, anime figure uh, as his pick on Twitter. I'm going to guess that he was on, um, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I, I don't want to go there. But uh, clearly the guy's got problems. We'll just say that. Uh, maybe he was a victim of, of the wrong kind of sexual assault. And if he was, you know, God bless him. But stay out of my timeline. Let's see here. Britney Spears. I told you we weren't going to do a whole lot of politics today. I just wasn't feeling it today. Some days you just got to detox from all that a little bit. And it's usually Mondays for me. Unless something really big happened over the weekend. I don't, so if you, I don't know if y'all follow Britney Spears on Instagram or not. But she's lost her ever-loving mind. And she hasn't posted anything fully clothed in quite a while. Frankly, she's even posted some nude with just like little smiley or heart emojis over her three private areas. And I, you know, I was having this conversation with probably Sean a while back, or maybe it was my girlfriend. But so you know, it really doesn't make any sense for her not to be on OnlyFans with the size fan base she has, and mix in the the male pervert aspect of it all as well. She could be making tens of millions of dollars. Well, a story from Outkick came out over the weekend it says Britney Spears would make a hundred million a year on OnlyFans, one OnlyFans expert says. Oh, I'm gonna just kind of skip here to the to the numbers part. But according to all the statistics, this is from a from a OnlyFans expert, Celeste Franklin. Says according to all the statistics I've examined, my prediction for her earnings would be that the first month of the launch will bring a massive influx of people possibly making her earnings range anywhere from 13 to 18 million. Celeste Franklin from the OnlyFans agency Plush told the Daily Mail. In the following months, her income will most likely level out to about six to nine million a month due to the decline of engagement that was caused by the initial curiosity, Franklin said. So uh, continuing on here in the article, it says, I'm not a mathematician, but even I can figure out that the high end, she's taking home more than a hundred million a year. That's nothing to sneeze at. And we put her up or near the top of all earners like rapper Iggy Azalea. All I know about Iggy Azalea, she, I think she's white or albino and she has a really big butt. According to the internet it says now the expert wouldn't be fully doing her job. if She didn't also point out that Brittany couldn't just hop on the platform and fire off nudes and make a hundred million dollars. It's not that easy. However, the former singer could, with a strategic approach and a well-thought-out plan to launch her account, make big money. That, on paper, looks like a lot of work. Franklin said that Spears would have to do things differently in order to truly stand out. Yeah, you mean dancing with knives in her panties? <laughs> Isn't doing things a little differently? <laughs> it says, instead of marketing the page to the male audience directly, a strategic approach would be to market the OnlyFans content as exclusive fan material, in addition to occasional explicit content to retain male interest, kind of like an exclusive page that doesn't have a filter or any sort of censorship on it. it says, uh, if anyone is going to, this is the outkick opinion, says if anyone is going to pass up on millions upon millions of dollars and opt to test the censors on social media platforms for free from the comfort of her mansion, it's Britney Spears. It's a type of crazy move you're almost forced into respecting. Never change, Brittany. It is 
kind of it is kind of strange. I mean, I've noticed it a while back, and just the the business the business mind in me just couldn't help but think, well, she sure is wasting away because she says she's never going to make any more music. She's one hundred percent done with the music business. I don't know if that means she's done with concerts and all that as well. But I mean, at some point, I don't know how much money she made. I know a lot of it went to pops and you know all that and. Money going to run out. Brittany ain't getting any younger. And frankly, she's just about giving it all away for free on the internet anyway. She might want to reconsider her options or find God. I mean, if she's going to keep living this life, allegedly strung out on amphetamines and throwing her cha-cha all over the internet, she probably needs to monetize that thing. But she ain't... She is not as attractive as she once was. She looks crazy as hell to me. Speaking of crazy women, Jackson, Mississippi yesterday, two different women killed their male significant others, albeit husbands or boyfriends or whatever, by shooting them and killing them. One was a Jackson Fire Department, Byron Fire Department veteran, um, Gerald Bates, and the other man, pull up my notes here, put everybody's names in here so I wouldn't forget them, Uh, 40-year-old Lloyd Ashley was the second victim. Don't know any details, but going back to Gerald, Gerald Tate, I'm sorry, not Bates, Gerald Tate, he was a veteran of the Fire Department uh, in Byron and Jackson. 41-year-old Tammy Williams was arrested following the shooting after a standoff with SWAT that led to a dog being killed and tear gas having to be used. That was right over there behind USA Pawn and behind the Jackson Square in that area, right off the McDowell Road exit on 55. And I think the other guy was killed in South Jackson. Also, I didn't write down the name of the street, but it sounded like a South Jackson street. I could be wrong. Folks, I'm going to I'm going to take into into account these were possibly uh well they were obviously domestic violence situations. I don't know if they were self-defense domestic violence or if they were the domestic violator, the aggressor. We don't know. I I've, I've I've seen other stuff on the internet that maybe suggests both things one one or the other could be true. I uh, I've seen the family of one of the women speak out and say that she was, she was being abused. I mean, all all kinds of stuff, but until we know, I'm just going to say this. Since I've been doing media around here and covering crazy stories and talking about things for the last three or four years. One thing I know is you don't mess with a Mississippi woman. They are crazy as hell. Britney Spears from Mississippi on the internet, dancing naked with knives. These two women shot and killed their husbands or boyfriends, whatever they are yesterday. You don't play with these women. They will cut you. They will shoot you. They're always right. You know, I have a nice, healthy relationship because I don't talk back. My girlfriend's always right. Always. (laughs) Man, look, all joking aside, if you're in a relationship, male or female, if you're in a, a violent relationship where somebody's putting their hands on you, it ain't going to get no better. They ain't going to change. They ain't going to quit putting their hands on you. They just It's just going to get worse. You need to press charges, and you need to leave. And if you don't press charges, you need to leave. Nothing. No cars, no houses. None of that stuff is worth being abused to keep it. Because then you may end up getting pushed to the point where you have to kill somebody in self-defense or because you've been pushed too far and you feel like that's the only way out. And unfortunately, the law might not look at that as self-defense. So, get out. Let's take a break. Come back, land the plane for the day. This is the Clay Edwards Show. 
Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Guys, don't forget, selling your vehicle, I'm buying cars. I have finally got a deal worked out. Got some money. Got access to some money. I am buying cars. I don't care if it's brand new or it's got 300,000 miles on it. You got a vehicle you want to sell. Pay off or not. Get you a check today. Local check. Not one of these Facebook Marketplace counter checks, these fake ones. A real check. Holler at me. 769-241-1944. A couple of y'all hit me up late last week. I was driving. I've lost the text. I can't find them. I, I, people send me stuff to so many different social media platforms and text app platforms. Sometimes I, I lose the text. But get back at me. I've got a deal in place. We're buying cars. We're paying fair market value. 769-241-1944. Can't remember that? ClayBuyesCars.com. My phone number and email address are there. The email address is simple. It's ClayBuyesCars at gmail.com. So, all right, man. A uh, fun show today. I'm in an argument online that I, I, I'm, I'm not going to win. Um, lesson of the day. Young boys like girls. If they don't, I got some questions. <laughs> uh, one, one of these people said, oh, yes. Let's downplay the sexual assault of boys. Well done, bro. You can just always tell when one of these woke nut jobs are talking by the way they type. Ah, oh, man. Anyway. Anyway, let's see here. We got about a minute left. Is there anything that I want to hit that I missed? Uh, Jackson, uh, going back to those homicides Sunday, that brings us up to 35 and 36 for the year. Here in Jackson, if you're wondering where that tracks us with last year, we're basically dead even. Let's see if I can pull it up here real quick before we go off the air. Jackson homicides. It's the final countdown. Yep. Um, on this day, last year. We're so close. WWT load. We got 10 seconds left. We were at 37 last year. We we're at 36 today. We had it. We finished last year with 118. Will we beat that record? It's been six homicides in 10, seven days. Bye.